welcome to a new video joined by Martin Hello. and Joanne, Hello. who you'll know from previous videos. We're on the site of Hearts Head Power Station and a little yeah. village called Hayrod. Yeah, I always get confused whether it was Hayrod Power Station. It must be Hearts Head Power Station, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. So I've yeah. searched it as Hayrod sometimes and stuff comes up. Yeah, yeah. And then but it brings up in the search Hearts Head. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure it is Hearts Head. Um so yeah, so the land was acquired for this way back in 1916, so over 100 years ago. So it's been here a while on site. Um, opened in 1926. You'll notice there's no cooling towers around because it was demolished in the 80s. The cooling towers were built in the 1940s. Uh, currently on site of the goods shed, which was used for Millbrook sidings. Uh, these were built a little bit later than the power station initially came along. 1932. So before we carry on, let's take a look where we are. So at the bottom of your screen, that is Staley Bridge. And at the top of the screen, that is where Michaelhurst. And where we're going today is a little village called Hayrod. Let's zoom in a little bit closer. So you can see that array of purple railway lines. On the left hand side, that is the active line. And on the right hand side, that is the disused Michaelhurst loop line. And all that chunk of purple lines is the former Millbrook sidings and engine shed. Now the engine shed is just here and the power station is on the other side of the canal, the Huddersfield Narrow Canal, just there. So that's what we're gonna take a look at first. We'll see you back down at the goods shed. So Millbrook sidings, when they came along, they joined onto the Michaelhurst line, which came from Diggle, which would take you to Stanish Tunnel. And over that way, we'll go towards Staley Bridge. Now, as you can see here, this was a conveyor belt. And what this did, the coal wagons from Millbrook sidings, the coal was then taken up by some kind of hopper and it was carried for up down this enclosed conveyor belt and was then taken along. Now this used to be twice the length of what it is and it was taken along, dropped to the site of the power station, whereas then it fed the power station. So we're gonna have a look around inside the goods shed. We think it's three floors high um, but there's no way of accessing the top section. Now the actual sidings themselves, they were capable of taking up to 130 12 tonne coal wagons. So that's quite a, a large amount, but then they're considerably smaller back then, wasn't it? These 12 tonne wagons than the old coal hoppers, what we've been used to seeing in recent years. So let's have a little explore and you can come along with us. So look at that, it is three floors, ground floor, first floor, and the upper floor. You can just see right at the top where ropes or chains would have been put on, hoists maybe. Got an inspection pit over here, look. So this would have been for general maintenance of wagons or locomotives. Really unsure what this would have been for, why that was such a long way down. Looks like there's actually a, a platform of some sort vacant from there, isn't there? There's all sorts of bits and pieces of steel framework and wood on the floor. And this here is another hole in the roof there. Looks like we can see all the way to the top. That's amazing, isn't it? 
So there would have been stairs, and the stairs have obviously gone, been taken down, removed, collapsed. And back at this end, there is still a gate present, well, half a gate anyway. It's just there like a flap. And just above that, there's actually a hole missing in the brickwork. Okay, this little section has clearly been bricked up at a, a later date. It's got the different brickwork there. Yeah. If we come out and have a look, we're all... Now, these could have been bricks from the original walls or the buildings around. We've got what was probably a little hut. And it's got a lovely little fireplace. Look at that. See how close we can get you. It looks like there's another little room on the other side. So we've come to the next one, and that's quite a way down. Yeah. Let's have a go. And look, I'm not sure what that would have been for. Got these little slats in the brickwork. You got a hole here as well, this side, this to that side. Oh. So I reckon this is deeper than what it actually is. Yeah, there's walls still here. Yeah. You can see the wooden Yeah, there's a lot of. Um, so there's the other fireplace on the other side from the fireplace we've just seen. I think um, I think Joanne's moving next door. Yeah, it's like a door. Oh. So we think these two were some kind of like um, workmen's huts or sleeping areas, some sort of like staff facility. Looks like potentially they were two floors high. So you've got the line just there, which was probably another floor. Um, whether these were fireplaces or some kind of kilns, but if it's a fireplace, we'd need a chimney, and this this is bricked off. So there's still some railway sleepers present, which are obviously been used as probably it floods occasionally, for people to walk along.
So there's your goods shed. We was looking in that a few minutes ago. And right next to it is part of the old conveyor system. Which shot across and dumped delivered coal over at the site of the power station. Because we've got the canal and the river in between this and the site of the power station. But before this was constructed, it did in fact go underground. It used to be dropped into hoppers and then taken through and dropped over on the other side. Look at this stonework. So that's directly underneath where the conveyor belt starts. And a part of an old telegraph pole for the boot there as well. So immediately behind the start of the conveyor, we've got the goods shed. We've got this sleeper. Now this sleeper looks like it's trapped in time. I mean, look at that. Look how that's corroded away. Even though it's a concrete sleeper. So why this random one could be sat here is unknown. It's the only one we've seen apart from some wooden ones around the other side. And the roadway up to the conveyor belt is this really light, large stone that's broken away. So we have to assume it did go further. But that is brilliant. See, that's quite curious, look. You'd think it was a collapsed manhole cover, but it does in fact, it carries on. You can't really see it in this shot. But it's like it's collapsed. There's a little bit more just there, look. Is that perhaps part of something that we may be looking for today? It's a great big block just here as well, look. Stone block. Here's the remains of something else, look. And another square section of bricks there. Good shed just for your interest is just there. And I think underneath here, it's probably where you used to be able to get down to where the hopper was. Looks like an old stairwell and this has been put on to stop people from going down. Can't see a great deal. Yeah, there's another gap there and I can just make out. There you go, look, it used to be a way down and we are right next to where the conveyor belt begins. So right behind the goods shed and the conveyor belt, we've got this, what looks like a man-made lake. So over there, there's a little tiny culvert right where I'm pointing. So we'll head on over there, but it's like a dam. And it says Carbrook Angling Group on there. But this looks, oh, let's get across it. So do you fancy having a go going in that? Too, uh, too small. <laughs> <laughs> right, so at this point we're at the furthest side of the site of the power station. So the goods shed is over in that direction and the conveyor belt. There's all this like derelict concrete land. You can see where all the supports have been cut away. We think this had something to do with the conveyor belt and how it fed the conveyor belt. So all this here, it's overgrown and green, would have been Millbrook sidings where the wagons would have been stored. So right next to the lake, so we've got the lake there. There's that little dam that we just walked across a couple of minutes ago. And there's this tower. Now the ladder used to be on there. I'd say it's probably about 50 feet high. And it's got like a little platform at the top as if it was a kind of like a lookout tower. But as the ladder's behind, then the lookout had to have been away from the lake and towards the power station. So whether it was a way of keeping an eye on that things was working right with the conveyor. Good job. And it was just a basic, it couldn't have had cameras on there, it's too old for that. So whether cool that would have been if someone had stayed up there all the time, that would have been a bad job. So a little bit of remains showed the railway, a bit of the old stone fencing, reinforced, uh, and it's like this little trough. Interesting stuff. So yeah, that's part of the old Michaelhurst line, so Diggle in that direction, Staley Bridge in that direction. And what we're looking for now is another little tunnel. And this tunnel was used for cables 
high voltage cables and also later on and currently still being used as a kind of culvert so let's go and find it okay so it was at this point we found our first little tunnel now at the top of this picture courtesy of manchester libraries you can see our huge undercover conveyor belt but below that there's a peculiar second one a shorter one now this we believe was the original source of the coal getting from the goods shed it partially went underground and ended up crossing the canal and reappearing at the power station we believe we found that underground tunnel now just a little look on the map again you can see exactly where we are there's the goods shed to the right hand side there is our canal we are roughly between the goods shed and the conveyor belt Sam's coming in. Hello. Have you heard the echo? Look at that. Can we just get... So we just come from here and it's collapsed a little bit. It's hidden in the woods. We've braved it, come through, and we've got this like nice rectangular structure all the way down. It's a hell of a lot safer looking than the entrance was. We've got some light in. There should be some hoppers at the end of here. Um, we're going to take it easy and have a little wander down, see what's there. We've been walking in there. Oh, we're sinking a fair old bit there. Yeah. Uh, maybe walk towards the edge. I've had one encounter in this week. Yep, I'm really going down. Yeah. Gonna so lose the one here. It's not good. I'm stuck. <laughs> that stinks. <laughs> that stinks. We're not going in there. But at least we found it, and that's what's important. That is bad. That, that is, is so bad. I can't believe how much that went down. Yeah. We're going to make our way out now. It's just no way of uh, getting down there. It smells, it's cold, it's wet. It was coming up to the wellies. But at least we found it. So right down by the side of the Huddersfield Narrow Canal, we are at the point of our second tunnel. It's a slightly different tunnel, but a similar size. Here's the location where it is. Let's get ourselves down inside. Okay, so just down from the side of the good shape, we just come down, we found this. And it does look extremely inviting. So you've got the canal just there, so you know exactly where we are. Let's go inside. Okay, we climbed over these cable runners now. We're going to take a look, see how far we can get with this. You see Martin's already made his way about 10 or 12 feet up. So it's time to step inside and see what we can find.
Shit. Is that it? No. Oh. Yeah, we're struggling to get through. So it's similar to what we've just had at the previous tunnel we went in. You know, we've got the warmth things now, we can walk through these. So it's not necessarily impossible, just extremely difficult. Right, so there you go. I think to end the distinct. <laughs> I'm approaching, as you can see, out there, struggling. <laughs> So this is the brickwork from that tunnel that we've just walked along to where the culvert was at the end. Look at those like, iron bars or rods going through it. And at the top, you remember we looked up that tower? Well that tower is this. It doesn't look very tall from the angle we're looking at. Let's get a bit closer. So we stood right above where we were in that culvert, so that's below us there. There's that tower with the rungs of the ladder takes to the top but we can't quite work out what the purpose of this was it's got the ladder on the inside but not on the outside so it wasn't exactly a way in I don't understand why it's so high yeah it is, isn't it? it's not like it's there was any kind of building next to it maybe it doesn't show any signs of that it don't show any signs of anything joining onto it maybe someone knows So our last location on this amazing explore today is onto the site of the power station itself. First off, it's onto where the first calling tower is, closest to the main line and the road through Hayrod, and then onto the site of where the second calling tower is and a few buildings that are still standing today. Let's get down there and bring this visit to a close. So we've got the River Tame and the canal bridge is just behind it. So you cross that in a parallel line or a straight line, you go straight down there. And that's where the first calling tower was just situated in there. So it's away from the road, away from the substation. And it resided in that overgrown area over there. The next one would have been further along the top of this road. This was, this is where the summer there's a sluice gate there, is there? Yeah. This was for the cooling towers, weren't it? So the first cooling tower we showed you was over there, and it's like a sluice gate here, taking you under the main road over to the actual main site of the power station. So this here, we believe, was the foundation of the cooling tower. These are quite possibly some leftovers from that. Not much else to look at. So there's another little bit there, well a big bit to be honest. Uh, maybe a little further down here, we'll see a bit more evidence. So if you follow that around you can see the curve of where the cooling tower would have been. And we're standing on the remains of what 
we believe is the cooling tower the one that stood alone away from the main buildings it looks like it's just come down during demolition in the 1980s and it's just been left and this is basically a cooling tower graveyard Okay, so we're inside this disused building. So that's all tiled off. Similar to how it would be in like a toilet or a shower blocks. Uh, multiple rooms. Um, through here. Looks like it's just single storey, no equipment. But it is tiled up as if it was maybe like a, a shower rooms or something. Go and have a look outside. Just don't pick it. I'll just leave it. So we got yet another building, and um, it appears to have some sort of like caps, like something's been capped off. Not sure what these are, but it's like they're covering something up. Oh, look at the old. Um, it's like one of the old um, lights you used to get with that, like lined glass outer with a normal bulb inside. Tree, it looks like something's been capped off on these. Possibly. How many is there? About five of them. Here is another one. And here's another one. And there's another one. So that's four. Five. Six. And they're all inside this elongated building. Which clearly, if you wanted to explore a bit more, we've got some stairs. So let's take a look up and see where these go. Oh wow. Oh wow. So immediately at the doorway there's this gaping hole and there's a chute there which goes down to the bottom where those uh, sealed off cappings were we've just been looking at. So we're going to go around here carefully. So right, stand here a minute. And then let's go through here. And my oh my, look at this. So we've got an array of uh, switchboards and cabinets. And they've got names, so that's Hadfield and Hattersley. I'm just going to let you do your thing then with your walk along as well. Do you carry on, don't worry about me. Uh, grid 2, Reactor BCI. Ashton 1, generator 6, bus section, generator 4. Let's just make our way around here. Got Hadfield 2, Ashton 2, reactor A and B, and one called Hurst. Let's have a little look behind them. There we go. And a bit further down. So Mosley, now we're near the little village of Mosley. Uh, reactor AC, so that's the third one then we've seen, grid free, another bus section, I'm assuming the bus is um, abbreviated for something. Generator 1, another Mosley, and reactor BC number 2. And there they are. 
So we've got these as well, it looked like old switch gear and electricals. Uh, they're on both sides, look. And this great big door. And some more steps. Bye. So we're now in the room, very next door to the switch gear and control panel room we've just been in. And there's more electrical gear on the sides here. Uh, look like old fuse housings, fuse boxes. Some like iron piping above there. So that obviously used to catch on the air joint on something. And even the floor's got a kind of a steel or iron base to it. There's more fuses and fuse boxes in here. Look at that. It's completely stripped in there. I imagine the entire Oh, there we go, a big hole just there. Imagine the entire room goes from one end to the other with these panels. Let's have a little wander through. See how we get to the other end. So it's more of the same. Panels with pipes above them. Here we are at the other end. Now then, we saw those chutes above us, didn't we? I think we saw two of them. Well, here we go, look. That's inside, one of them chutes. That's great. Okay. A lot of holes everywhere. Right, let's go back to the other end. So, leaving that little room, we can come out here bit of a drop there and there's more uh, Martin's got my light at the minute but yeah more wiring and electrical panels so it looks like the center of the operation for the entire power station was in this building here with all those control panels electrical panels the boxes, the fuse boxes. I think there's one more doorway that I want to go and look at. And look at this here. How peculiar is that? And some kind of troughs up here. Okay, one more flight of stairs before we conclude our little tour of Hartshead power station and I think it's going to be more of the same so I think that's where we've just been in oh. yeah it is so there isn't really anything else oh, no. to look at So this little bit of site we're on now, the, the second cooling tower was situated. Now I can't find any remains of that one as there was with the other one where there was the iron rods and the crushed rubbled concrete laying around. And yeah, there, there doesn't seem to be any trace of it whatsoever. But looking at historical pictures, this is roughly where it stood. So I think this was the foundation of the the second cooling tower so it's like a, a curved outline around there and it curves around a little way just here so that put it in line with the other one which was over there that we looked at previously
So we're beside the weir at the River Tame, and just over there, you won't see it, it's that little tunnel and the tower we looked at with a little stream of water coming through. And just there, that's the little art ball. We can't see any of us along this stretch of river. We're pretty sure that that's going to be it. So it's nice to see that little journey come to a conclusion. So over there, we've got the enclosed coal conveyor that we saw right at the very beginning of the video. Now, you've got to imagine that that was double the length at one time, so it used to come over the canal, it come over the River Tame, and it would have dropped the coal down there onto the stockpiles. This was cut away many, many years ago, out of safety, I expect. Um, okay, what a fantastic day. So we started off with a railway track bed, the good shed. We've got the enclosed coal conveyor over there. We've had the site of the cooling towers. We've had the ruins of the power station itself, all the control panels. We've had a little bit of absolutely everything, haven't we? Yeah. Brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, it's been very Good worthwhile. Place. So thanks, Martin. No problem. Thanks again. S see you next time. Thanks, Jojo. Bye-bye. <laughs> and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.